Join us for this week's episode on the DevOps Lab. We have a very special guest with us, Nick Greenfield. On this week's episode, we're going to be talking about deploying Dapper applications on AKS. So tune in. Welcome to this week's episode of the DevOps Lab. With us this week, we have a very special guest, Nick Greenfield. Welcome, Nick. Hi, thanks for having me on the, on the show today. Really excited to have you here because we have another part in the series about Dapper. So tell us what you do at Microsoft. Yeah, so uh, I'm a senior program manager. Uh, I've been working on Dapper for about five months now. Um, yeah, really excited to be working on this project. It, it is such a cool project. You guys have gotten a lot of promotion around the open source community. Um, and we've been seeing so much that came out of Ignite about Dapper. And today you're gonna tell us about Dapper on AKS. So take it take it away and, and tell us what we're gonna learn today. Yeah, absolutely. So um, this is part two of the, of the series. Uh, so I recommend if you haven't seen part one, my colleague Paul provided a great overview of what Dapper is um, and how it works. So definitely check that out. But just to provide a quick recap, um, Dapper stands for Distributed Application Runtime. And Dapper offers uh, developers a set of APIs that help simplify microservice development and implementation. Uh, the Dapper APIs are uh, available through sidecar processes that run in tandem with your applications. And these APIs help abstract away common complexities that developers frequently encounter when building a distributed app. So, you know, some of these complexities, for example, can consist of how your application handles inter-service communication, you know, whether that's direct service to service calls or message passing, message passing via like pub sub queues. Um, Dapper offers these APIs to help accomplish those tasks uh, while offloading a lot of that heavy lifting to the Dapper sidecar. And I love thinking of it as that sidecar that moves with your app and makes it extra portable, no matter where it's sitting um, in that container. So yeah, take it away. Show us, show us some more stuff about Dapper and AKS. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So for today, um, I want to show you how simple and easy it is to take a Dapperized, as I refer to it, uh, application that I have running uh, locally on my dev machine and get that up and running in AKS. Um, and so during this deployment, I want to demonstrate the process of uh, swapping out some of the Dapper components that I might be using when I'm developing my app locally. In this case, we'll look at a PubSub um, component mm -hmm. for uh, an already provisioned Azure service that's running um, up in up in Azure, in, in this case, Service Bus. Um, and now, how I can, sorry, go ahead. I was just saying, oh, that's, that's awesome. That That's a really great use case. So yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, it, and, and I think the wow factor really will be how I can swap out these components without actually having to change any of my application code. Uh, really, it's just a configuration change. Nothing about my my application actually changes. And that's a game changer because many times when we deploy applications, we have to go and reconfigure application, and that causes a lot of issues. So I'm really excited to see this. So Nick, take it away. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to flip to my screen real quick. And I think before we get into the deployment, it's probably worth spending a couple minutes on the application itself and how uh, Dapper is at play with this app. So this is our uh, this, this, the sample application that we'll be working with today. You can actually find this sample app um, in the Dapper samples repository in GitHub. Um, it's called our Twitter sentiment uh, processing sample app. And uh, the purpose of this app really is to pull down any tweets on the web that uh, might contain a specific keyword. In this case, mm -hmm. any tweet that contains the keyword Microsoft, uh, we actually can pull that down using a Dapper input binding. And then we can take those tweets and have it run through uh, Azure Cognitive Services to have a sentiment analysis on that tweet. So you, as you can see in these little emojis here, um, these are the sentiments for these tweets. So you have some you know, happy, positive, uh, maybe you have someone that's a little bit angry or confused, right? Um, and then we pass these tweets to the front end to be displayed here. And so jumping back to my screen, uh, this is how that application is actually architected. Um, you can see that there's those three services, the Twitter handler, sentiment processor, and the front end tweet viewer. And so where it all starts is there's that Twitter binding component that's pulling those tweets from the web and passing it to the Dapper sidecar here, which then is taking those tweets and using another one of the Dapper APIs for this service to pass the tweet over to the sentiment processor, which is actually running that sentiment analysis on that tweet. 
And then once that sentiment analysis has been complete, it sends it back and it passes it into this Redis pub sub component that I have here running locally, where the, mm -hmm. the front end tweet viewer is able to pull those, those tweets out and show them in real time. Um, and so that's, this is a simplified version of how that application is running. And, and so when I'm running this app on my local machine, I run each of these, the Twitter service, the Dapper sidecars, and then I have a Redis container um, that's just running uh, locally through Docker Desktop. Very so, cool. Yeah. And so what I want to do is take this and show you how simple it is to actually convert this to this. Ultimately, my application deployed running in AKS. And you notice here that I've actually swapped out the Redis component uh, for an Azure Service Bus component. And again, okay. I can do that without any application code changes itself. Cool. Great. Okay. So uh, the first thing that I would want to do to prepare my app to be deployed is to make sure that my deployment files for my services are, are properly annotated for Dapper. So you can see here, this is an example of the processor, that Twitter handler service uh, that I had, and it's that deployment file for Kubernetes. And I have these Dapper annotations, dapper.io slash enable, dapper.io app ID. And so what this basically says is, uh, this app is using Dapper, so you know it's enabled for Dapper, inject that sidecar next to this service. And then I've given it a unique ID, and this is how the sidecars are able to communicate with each other. So this one, in this case, is called the processor component. So I'll have to do this for every single one of my, uh, my deployments for my services. So once that's complete, I want to swap out my component. And this is like where I think the magic happens. This really enables the portability of, of, of Dapper today. So I have a component file. Uh, these are uh, another, they're, they're constructed as YAML CRDs. Um, and you can see here that this is my pub sub component that we're referring to for Redis when I'm developing locally. So it has a name, and this is how my application actually interacts with the component by its name. And then I have the underlying type and the metadata that's needed to connect to that component. So what I would do is I would take this component and actually swap it for something that looks like this so that I can leverage Azure Service Bus that I have running in Azure. Notice how the name doesn't change, but the actual type of that component does. So now I'm connecting to the service bus, and then the metadata that is needed to connect to that service bus instance needs to be reflected here. But again, my application is only interacting with this thing by its name, so that doesn't need to change. That's awesome. So you don't actually have to change name, but just the components and the metadata connecting into it, which- Exactly, just a couple of YAML really file cool. changes and your app still still targeting and integrating with these components as it, as it always was. So now that you know my app is ready for deployment, the last thing that I need to do is make sure Dapper is enabled and installed on my cluster. And so uh, as of a month ago, uh, AKS has released the Dapper extension, which is currently in public preview. You can go out and try this today. Um, but it'll, this ultimately what this extension allows you to do is install Dapper on your AKS cluster through a single CLI command, which you can see in this picture here. And the nice thing about this extension is it really is the easiest way to install Dapper on AKS, and it has some nice features integrated into it. For one, uh, you can actually opt into auto automatic upgrades and rollbacks of the extension of the Dapper runtime itself. So if that's something that you want to offload uh, to the extension, you can. Um, secondly, it supports all native configuration options that Dapper supports today. Um, and it does this with some smart defaults. So as you can see here, if I run this command and it installs Dapper on my cluster, the ultimately what happens is I get this Dapper system namespace running in my cluster with a Dapper control plane um, already installed. But you can see that there is uh, multiple pods per each of these control plane resources because it installed this in a high availability mode. It's almost like a production ready environment where if one of these has troubles, there's a couple of trouble, you know, initializing or it's in a you know crash back off loop. There's other uh, instances where this can, um, you know, take over. Uh, so you're, you're never really, you know, in, in, in trouble. There's always backups available. Yeah. Uh, and I like the fact that you can do the high availability mode and it actually auto updates and saves that overhead management, especially with containers. And, and again, if a pod fails, it will pull another one up. So that's really awesome. Yeah. Let, less stuff for you to worry about, right? As a developer. Exactly. Code first, uh, right? Exactly. So, so this is, uh, you know, for more information on this extension, you can go here or even you can quick start that will get you started with this extension on another sample app today. Um, so uh, with that, I'd like to show this in practice. Let's do it. This looks so easy and it saves like, it sounds like it's going to save people a lot of headaches when not having to reconfigure their app. So I'm looking forward to seeing this, Nick. Awesome.
Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to install the uh, Dapper extension on my AKS cluster. So I have a, a bare bones cluster that was just provisioned um, and I haven't done anything with it. There's no application running and the Dapper is not running. So the first thing I would do is run that command. All right, it looks like the installation of Dapper extension has succeeded. You can see that here with this provisioning state succeeded. And so what I should be able to do is now if I say cube cuddle get namespaces, see that I have this Dapper system namespace as of three minutes ago, and then cube cuddle get pod slash n, Dapper system. You can see that I have the Dapper control plane installed and I have and that all high pods. availability. Awesome. Yeah, and it's on all your pods. That's awesome. Yeah. And so at this point, Dapper is installed and it's up to me to install my application. And so what I can do here, I have my Helm install uh, already set for me and I'm filling in some connection strings that my, my Helm charts require. So if I enter this. Okay, so while that's installing, uh, it takes a couple minutes, I'm gonna switch to a cluster where I already actually have Dapper installed. And so mm -hmm. we look now, kubectl uh, get pods dash n Dapper system. You can see there's the Dapper control plane already installed. So at this point, I'm ready to install my application. So I will paste in uh, my Helm install command that has some variable set that my charts rely on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can see that the Dapper sidecar has attached each of the pods, it's running, and then that high availability can pull up another pod if something does break. Exactly. Uh, and so there you go, There, my, my Helm uh, install command went through, it looks like it was deployed. Um, and so what I wanna do is check out the Dapper dashboard dash k and what this will do is actually open up the dapper dashboard where i can prove that the components that i'm using now in my app is actually running up in, in my kubernetes cluster so here are those three services running mm -hmm. in as of 25 seconds ago and if i go through now you can see that my components i'm still using that uh the, the tweet button the binding is pulling the tweets from you know the web but also here's my pub sub component which is no longer using redis it's actually using that azure service bus instance and so also i go back to here and i do cube cuddle get service and i look and i have this public ip of my front end I open this hopefully this is ready for us to, to hit There, my connection is now open, and here you go. Tweets are populating, and this is all from the front end of my AKS cluster. And again, I didn't have to change any of my application code. I just swapped out a component, YAML, for the service bus component, and I added some Dapper annotations. And just like that, I went from a local development environment to a Kubernetes environment where my application is running. Thank you, Nick, for showing us that. That was super easy for developers to get started. It's gonna save them a ton of time changing their code. And the Dapper sidecar was easy to set up and it hooks the application and you made those changes super, super easy. So thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Join us next time, everyone. We're gonna be talking about more Dapper. Uh, we'll put all the awesome links that Nick had for us, including his demo in the show notes so you can check them out and tune in next time. And thank you for joining us on this episode of the DevOps Lab. Oh, mm -hmm.